So now the much awaited session. As an agricultural research scientist, it's my honor to introduce the speaker of the session, even though Professor Rajavan, she has already mentioned that, make it very brief. So what can I say? Like he is a, a mechanical engineer by profession, trained and a part of uh, University of Florida, IIT Kanpur alumni. And as Professor Sharma mentioned, it's not the fancy equipments, even on shoestring budget, Sir has developed so many technologies for rural India. And I think that's why he was bestowed with the fourth best civilian award of our country. Let's give a big round of applause to Professor Rajamanshi, Padma Shri Award of 2022. I think I don't need to uh, say about the biography of him. That itself shows uh, his credibilities. And may I now request Professor Rajamanshi to deliver the much awaited Science Day lecture, The Need of Learning Science for Human Wellbeing. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and my young friends. In fact, I am really delighted and honored to be here. And when Ashutosh asked me, he's a very dear friend of mine, to come, I immediately said yes, because I enjoy talking to the youngsters, because you are the future of this country. We are all old. You will run this country. You will make this country a great country. And I hope that you will be so proud of it that you would not like to go abroad. How many of you like to go abroad? Honestly, raise your hands. Why do you want to go abroad? Great. Why don't you do it here? No, that is fine. All the great companies are being run by Indians. Yeah, but I, I'm just simply saying that for the future of this country, we should all strive to make this as a great and a, a nation where we all can emotionally satisfy our hunger and live holistically. I have tried in my own small way. And today I like to share with you that journey. And I hope it will inspire some of you to follow what I have done. <clears throat> The title of my talk, which was actually suggested by Dr. Rajendra, is The Need of Learning Science for Human Wellbeing. In fact, you and I are here only because of science and technology. I flew on an airplane. You are, I'm talking with you through this microphone. Each and everything that you do in this world is because of science and technology. So why hate that? It's not that you want to make this as a career but it is to develop a scientific temper, to think deeply. And as Dr. Ashutosh Sharma said, to look at things very differently. And if we do that, then you may go into any sphere, any uh, you know, new uh, development, whatever it is, but you will look at it from a very scientific point of view. And that is what we'll discuss. I run a small NGO with my wife, who is also here, Dr. Nandini Nimkar. Uh, it's in a rural Maharashtra where we do research in uh, R&D, in agriculture, renewable energy, animal husbandry, and overall in sustainable development. And I'll be delighted to have some of you youngsters come for internship for four to Today is a National, National Science Day. Dr. Rajendra and Dr. Ashutosh have already suggested, celebrated because of C. Equipment and ingenious methods. Raman discovered his Raman effect. In fact, he gave the first experimental proof 
of quantum theory. Quantum theory had already come out of Einstein. Quantum theory had come out of Heisenberg, um, Bohr, other, everybody. But Raman's experimental work showed for the first time the whole basis of quantum theory. And that is the reason why he got the Nobel Prize. He was nominated by uh, Lord Rutherford. Luther Rutherford himself was a great experimentalist and he was very inspired by very, very simple experiments, but a very deep thought. And this is what I'm going to talk about, that you develop this scientific temper by producing a deep thought. That is the basis of whole our yoga. That is the basis of Patanjali's yoga. Deep thought on any subject for a long time produces complete discoveries and it gives you a very high. And that is what is the basis of humanness. And I think you will enjoy. And I'm sure that when you do something really thinking very deeply, you're not concerned about the time, you're not concerned about the output. It gives you a very nice feeling. And that is the scientific temper. Raman and K.S. Krishnan, his co-discoverer of this effect. But now Raman got the Nobel Prize, but that's a very different story. And Rutherford nominated him, and he was Asia's first Nobel awardee. Interesting thing is, Raman developed his or discovered his effect in 1928. And in 1930, he got the Nobel Prize. He was one of the fastest Nobel Prize given in, to anybody. In fact, there are people who work, who had worked for 40, 50 years ago. They are almost tottering, about to die, and then they give the Nobel Prize. In my University of Florida, I had a great distinction of interacting with a lot of Nobel laureates interaction with my colleagues who were on the Nobel Prize Committee, and I should discuss. And you know, another thing is, we somehow get too much carried away by the Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize is something else. What you should be looking at is how you will develop science and technology for the benefit of this country. Nobel Prize will come. Prizes will come. Nobel Prize today is given for very, very narrow discoveries, because what is useful for the Western countries is what is normally, because you know, Nobel Prize, so I used to discuss and um, uh, I digressed with my uh, friend who was a member of the Nobel Prize Committee. He said, Nobel Prizes are given because of politics. Everybody has a champion. They keep on championing your uh, discovery. They, there are big meetings and the discussions and depending upon who is more powerful in that uh, discussion, you get the prize. Don't be carried away with that. Do something wonderful with your life. Do something great. Try to solve the problem which exists six feet from your nose. And that is how we'll build this country. That is what Gandhiji taught us, that you change yourself, you change the things around you, and the country will become great. So if you do some things beautiful with your life, with thinking very deeply, then you'll do something great. And Nobel Prize will come, Nobel and other prizes. There are too many other prizes also equivalent to Nobel Prize, but Nobel Prize is his own charisma. So don't be carried by that. History of civilization is the history of science and technology. You, you uh, read the history and you'll find that whoever had the better forces won the war. How many of you are historians? How many of you read history? Have you read the history of India? You know, I would suggest. And I'm not uh, taking any isms, etc. Please read the discovery of India by Nehru. You know, people don't read that. It's a very pan-historic process. During the COVID time, I reread it again. It's a very remarkable book. He was a great writer, and he will it will give you a very nice historical point of view. All the wars are won by forces which have a much more better science and technology. In fact, how many of you read Real Mahabharat? Not the, uh, not the, okay. So when it was decided that the war will take place, naturally it was a Krishna Leela. He was involved in everything. So every forces started coming and talking to him. Sir, we will um, um, uh, help you, help the Pandavas. He used to ask them, let's take, 
and he was afraid that they might not come with Pandavas, but they'll go to Kauravas. He made them destroy that. Throughout the history of mankind is a history of science and technology. Today, we don't need to go for this wars. In fact, I think as we evolve, we'll also become so ho hopefully spiritual that we will not wage wars, but we will wage a different war. War over poverty, war over uh, stupidity, <laughs> war over um, uh, andhavishwas, so that we become a very great nation that we were, because some of the greatest philosophical thought of this world has come from India. And that is what I think the future of India is. And that is how we will become Vishwaguru, as our Prime Minister talks about. Vishwaguru will come when we match, when we combine the modern science technology with spiritual thought. And that has been my basic idea. That is, I have written about it in hundreds of articles and my book is on that. So we will become great. Our resources, you are the resources. You as a young uh, uh, scientist, as young youngsters are our best resource. And if you do something wonderful, this country will become very great. Science and technology will propel us to greatness and well-being for all. We need to create great scientists and engineers. The father of hydrogen bomb was my colleague in the University of Florida. It was not, uh, what was his name? I put, it was Stanley Ulam. Stanley Ulam's paper gave finally the final swoop of the hydrogen bomb. So I used to discuss, you know, naturally he was a very great scientist, very great uh, mathematician, uh, but he was also very fond of the Indian philosophy and I being the president of India Association, so some connection was there. And I used to always ask him, asked, asked him, why did he get involved with atomic energy, with atomic bomb? Because he was a very close friend of Fermi and all of them were very important part of the Manhattan Project. Have you heard about Manhattan Project? Atom bomb? You know? So Manhattan Project, mein, he played a very important role. And he used to tell me that we did that for science and technology. We never thought where it will be used. We never thought about the consequences. It was a great challenge. We were interested in developing a totally new area because nobody knew about it. And that is what is a scientific temper. So in whatever way, you, whatever thing you do, whether cooking, whether playing sports, there is a scientific temper. Go deeper into it. And when you do that, it is a very challenging, a very nice feeling that you get. Science is understanding of nature and world around us. It's driven by curiosity, as Dr. Sharma said. Be curious. In fact, you know, nowadays, I give a lot of lectures to the, because that's the reason why I'm always attracted to the youngsters, because to me, you are the future of this country. So I give lectures into some of the most small villages in the schools, because I feel that everybody can be a great scientist or great technologist and a great person. And I always tell them, just be curious. Curiosity is something which is, has been stopped in this country. You ask a question and immediately the teacher might say, stop, you um, uh, read your book. That is not the, should not be the um, uh, aim. Be curious, ask a lot of questions. I'll tell you a very interesting thing. My mother used to always tell me that don't get your hair cut on Saturday. And she said that because on Saturday this happens, that happens. And I made sure that I get my hair cut on Saturday. And I used to always ask, why? And nothing happened. Be curious. You can do anything. And that curiosity, following your curiosity, looking deeper, it will also make you fearless. And when you become fearless, you can do wonderful things. In fact, the whole world has been uh, driven by people who are fearless. When Einstein developed his theory, it was a totally a, a man, totally fearless man who ventured into areas which nobody had ventured. The whole discovery of science and technology is a history of very fearless people who ventured ahead. Ask questions and have acute observations. How, why, and who 
about a situation should be asked. Darwin wrote once that not only a great man should ask very intelligent questions, but he should also do his homework and try to provide the answers. It is not necessary that you provide always the correct answers, but focus on finding the answers. Because when you start finding the answers, then your questions also sharpen. And that is the whole basis of discovery. Science allows us to create a worldview. In fact, all around us, you look at things, you try to analyze, and you try to see how they work, try to put that in the uh, mathematical form and try to solve those mathematics. And then that solution should match with the actual observation. In fact, it's very interesting that there is one Shruma Sutra in Patanjali Yoga which says similar thing. And that is the reality. And I think if we do that, we also explore the truth. And the most important thing for every young student, scientist, is to search for truth. Tell the truth. If you do not tell the truth, if you uh, do um, uh, uh, other things, then that is not a very good thing. And all great, great discoveries have followed this route. And greatest benefit of science is it allows us to predict, control, and use for our benefit. All of you have gone through far, uh, force is equal to mass into acceleration, isn't it? This was developed by Newton. Now, can you imagine if you did not have this equation or you did not have this, you would have been doing hundreds of experiments just to find out when you put certain force, what is the velocity of that particular object? Science allows us to predict, to extrapolate, and it gives us a great power to manipulate. Now I'll tell you a little bit about my scientific journey. It's basically a Janoon. I have followed all my life Janoon, and that is what I'm going to try to tell you, that you should have Janoon in your life. And if you have Janoon, is it all right if I talk in English or Hindi? Mein bolu? Eh? Okay. okay. So the Janoon is something that you should, you are at the right age, develop that Janoon. And if you develop that Janoon, then you can really do wonderful things in your life. I was born and raised in Lucknow and I was very inspired by steam engines. Anytime anybody came to our house, we had to go and uh, receive them at the railway station. So my parents would be uh, receiving them and I would be standing next to the steam engine, mesmerized. And that is something that really made me go and become an engineer. Then my father went to jail with Gandhiji in 1942 movement. And naturally he was very inspired by that movement. And on my 13th birthday, he gave me a biography in Hindi of Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography of truth. And I was totally mesmerized by that. It was like a switch. And this opened up a whole new um, areas. And I started reading about the spiritual books. Lucknow had a fantastic library called Acharya Narendra Library. Is anybody from Lucknow? Okay. <laughs> He's my friend. Dr. Love Verma is a, um, a distinguished bureaucrat, retired as a, a secretary to the government of India. So we both are, are from Lucknow. And it allowed me to read all these books and it was a very great thing at the age of 14, 15. And I feel that reading is the most important thing. You may read anything. It allows the movie to start. It allows a tremendous imagination. Please remove yourself from this uh, social media. How many of you have ever done this uh, work of finding out how much time you spend on your mobile phone? How much time you spend? No, no, no. I don't believe that. That's not, that's not the right. I don't believe that. Just write. It's for your own thing. Write from morning till evening for 15, 20 days how much time you spend on the social media. And you'll be surprised. Theory. WhatsApp is also social media. So, so all these things, if you do that, you'll find out. Because, you know, this has given us a very strange thinking. We have become reactionaries. 
we only react if you send an sms and you don't get a reaction you are like a fish out of water you are continuously you know why the, the this has not come we have stopped thinking human brain is a one of the biggest marvels of this world and we don't utilize it because we are all the time reacting and when you react all the time this contemplation thinking etc which makes you what you are is all gone and this creates anxiety this creates fear this creates so many things the whole spectrum of emotion and please get away from it reading is the most fantastic thing reading allows you to your brain to articulate to think about in a certain manner it starts a movie imagination opens up social media is not bad but uh, do it for a very short time and i think that is the whole basis of a scientific temper how you focus and produce a very deep thought is what you should do then i wanted to go into iit kanpur got very high je position i have written about it in this blog there was janoon for knowledge and one of the most important thing that i did in iit kanpur in those times it was a five year program and i took nine courses in humanities so whatever i am today is because of the humanities courses and i think that humanities is something even if you are in the scientific stream etc please read humanities it gives you a well rounded personality and that is the best thing that can happen oops what are you doing how do i get out okay so easy then i went to united states got involved in large number of areas thirst for knowledge money somehow never entered the vision field because when you are thinking on a higher thought all these spin tricks go away did my phd in 1979 from university of florida it's a good university today it's one of the five, fifth highest university in the united states in public service, um, public universities taught there for two and a half years and also met my wife in fact i think that is the best thing that happened she is also a distinguished alumna of university of florida she did her phd in agronomy and in a fit of madness and arrogance came to rural india actually that i always say but i think large part of it goes to my wife she said i am going you come or not and i think that is the most important thing find a better half who will always want to come back i had in fact large number of silicon valley is owned or run by my classmates from iit kanpur in those times and i before coming from united states i all i went to all of them and i said let's go we'll do something wonderful for our country so immediately they made a list they said we don't get there we don't get this we don't get that so i said we are not going to um, india to get all these things we are going for a higher purpose so i feel that if both of you are Uh, if you have a uh, better half if you both are interested then that i think will be a very positive thing madness that i will do wonderful things with my engineering knowledge not knowing the ground reality initial months were very tough but once i did it and i'll tell you arrogance that i will change india you know it was this you at this age you are very arrogant and i have written about this in my book 1970s america read about that arrogance how stupid i was india is one of the most ancient society of of this planet earth and how idiot i was that i'll change india india did not change it changed me it made me humble i found out that the problems of rural india are such that for seven generations i or somebody else cannot solve it it taught me spirituality and it taught me sustainability that to live in rural india you have to do this and it gives you a different sense and different feeling and all my life this is what i have done for the last 40 years i have looked at technology i have looked at spirituality and sustainability and i think it gives a very nice feeling i don't make money we both 
you know, when we came back for three years, we were driving our bicycle, our bicycles. Everybody used to laugh in Fulton that they have been for such a long time in America and now they drive bicycles. But that should not bother you. What should bother you is your own feeling, thinking, and what gives you happiness. So one thing I have learned, be foolish. Wonderful things happen when you first jump, then find out where you are. Be fearless and believe in yourself. When I came back, my father said that you were the biggest fool. I sent you to the best schools in Lucknow, to IIT Kanpur. He didn't send it, but you know that's what he said, being a father, and uh, to the United States. And now you come to this whole, whole place. Fulton was a place where to make a long distance call, I would hop on the bus in 1980s, come to Pune four hours and make phone calls. So that was Fulton. And, but, you know, once you jump, you think where you have come, you want to make the best of it. So I stuck. And it has not been a bad journey. I, in my run, a small NGO in rural Maharaj. It's called Nari. Nari is Nimkar Agriculture Research Institute. It was started by Nandini's father way back in 68. And uh, Mr. B.V. Nimkar, he was also Padmashiri. He got in 2006 for starting the institute for doing a lot of work in agriculture. We do research and development in agriculture, renewable energy, animal husbandry, and sustainable development, and try to use the best tools of science and technology for solving rural problems. Focus on technology development and extension work. We have 100 acres of farm and total staff of 30 to 35. It keeps on fluctuating. And we are always looking for good people. And I'll be delighted to have some of you smart people who want to do something wonderful in life. I'm not asking you to spend all your life, but come and spend some time. Know what uh, exists in rural India and try to use your knowledge for that. Details on our website. Now I'll tell you, we talk about curiosity. How the curiosity driven R&D that I did. When I came back from United States, most of the times there was no electricity in Fulton. So I used to study or in our house, we used to have these lanterns running on kerosene. And I started thinking, see the curiosity helps you do a lot of things. I started thinking that why nothing has been changed in the last hundred years. These kerosene lanterns were developed in around 1860, 1850. So we started a program on improving the lanterns. And the improvement of the lantern, I think at the time, probably that was the first program anywhere in the world on how to improve these lanterns. Then I started because curiosity, I said, you know, these were all kerosene lanterns. So the kerosene was very dirty fuel. So I said, can we produce a fuel ourselves, which we can put in this lantern that will give light and also we produce. It. And we started a very major program of producing ethanol from sweet sorghum. Ethanol up till that time had not been thought as a cooking and lighting fuel, but we started that. Now it is a very major program in Africa and Latin America. And that was something that came from our work. So we developed, I, I show in the first slide, the, the lantern was, then we developed a land stove. So when, when we do, did a lot of things, we, do, we combined the lantern with the stove running on ethanol so that the heat of the light could cook a complete meal for a family of five. And we tested in a lot of um, uh, um, uh, huts and et cetera. So land store development. And then when we were working, you see again the curiosity, when you were working with these poor people, then I started seeing how poorly they ate. And we looked at what they ate, what exactly they were spending in those, I, this is almost 10, 15 years ago. They were spending around 300 to 400 rupees per month on medical bill. For a poor person, the best medicine is food, not medicines. It's for rich people like us who are fat, who need medicines. But for a poor person, if he gets he or she gets a good food, then that is the best medicine because they, the whole body then becomes immune and good, very good. And this helped us start a program called Rural Restaurants. And you must have heard about the Amma's Kitchen in Tamil Nadu and Shiv Bhojan in Maharashtra that came from our program, which started in 2012. So I'm just simply saying that if you have a curiosity, you know, we are a very small institute, but you can think deeply and inspired by C.V. Raman, 
with very simple equipment. As you said, 200 rupees. It's very, very simple equipment, but a deep thought. And you can do wonderful science and technology. You don't require anything. Just look at the problems around you. Try to see how you can solve that. And today, the amount of knowledge available on the internet is so much. Utilize that. And you will be able to do wonders with the knowledge. Then I, when I came back, the whole Maharashtra, today, even today, Maharaj, the uh, Fulton is in the Western Maharashtra, which is a sugar cane growing area. So after the sugar cane is harvested, what is left behind are the leaves. And farmers want to immediately remove all those leaves because there's a disposal problem. And uh, because they want to have the field ready for the next uh, um, um, planting of sugar cane. So they burn the leaves. It's a huge pollution. You know, in Delhi, you all live all around uh, the agriculture residues are burned. So in 1980s, we started this program of what can be done about these agriculture residues. And this helped us develop a Talukaila energy program, which was run by Ministry of Non-Conventional Energy Sources. And we are very proud that it helped start the National Biomass Power Policy. So a very small institute working in shoestring budget, but thinking about the actual problems, you can do wonderful things. And, you know, you don't have to have very big funding from government, etc. Just, I personally feel that all of you, today we are talking about the uh, startups, etc. Each one of you should become a startup. In science and technology, trying to solve the problem of your local thing. This will be a great thing for you to do. And if you do that, then it will give you the purpose of learning science and technology and doing something wonderful. Then loose leafy biomass gasifier, we are the first people to start that program. And then I come from Lucknow and I was always very disturbed by the fact that the poor rickshaw puller is pulling you on his own power. So when the time came, I started the work and this was the first electric rickshaw anywhere in the world. So very proud today, all the electric rickshaws that you see probably came from our work. This was started in 1995 when nobody thought about electric rickshaws. We developed the first electric rickshaw, not only in the country, but in, in uh, anywhere else. So I'm simply saying that wherever you may be, and I don't have too much money, etc., but think about the problems and try to solve them. Most important thing is have perseverance. I have lived in that place for 40, 42 years. People said, how could you survive? I survived because I started thinking about other things. And spirituality is my... Also another forte, I write a lot. Uh, Narayani Ganesh is sitting here. She was the uh, editor of uh, Hindustan, of Times of India. And she was the editor of uh, uh, Speaking Tree. And she made me very famous because all my articles were uh, carried by her. And it gave me a tremendous joy and satisfaction. I write a lot. And I think that writing has come from the humanities courses that I took. So I'm simply saying that whatever you do, do wonderful things but also communicate. Communication is the most important thing for a scientist. In fact, I had been inspired by, um, uh, what was the name, Nandini, that uh, famous scientist who communicate the cosmos, Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan used to be there when I was in the United States. And Carl Sagan made the whole cosmos uh, you know, program in PBS. It was a fantastic program. A lot of scientists were very anti because they, they said that Carl Sagan has become very famous, but Carl Sagan did a great service to science and technology because he communicated. So all of you, no matter what discoveries you do, communicate. Communication is the most important thing because what is the purpose of your doing anything if you don't communicate? I write a lot. In fact, people tell me that uh, I'm a big show off because whatever I do, I write. I write because I will forget. And I think this goes into a nice archive of the human um, uh, knowledge and I think that's what it should be. I have written up all our inventions in this book, Romance of Innovation. It's, all my books are freely available on the net. Please read them and I think you will enjoy reading it. Our latest work is on providing clean water for rural schools. When we started looking at some of the things, we found that the rural schools had very bad, very poor water. The Children were suffering from diarrhea, 
typhoid, etc. And we said that we developed a technology for solar cleaning it. We developed the rainwater harvesting. We combined that and we would like to put this now in the uh, Fulton schools. This is a project we have gotten from Tata Sons. And I would like we'll I'll be delighted if some of the some of the schools in Delhi also put this as a part of the clean water. And the most important thing is that we are producing the modules for teaching teaching the children because children will learn much more by hands-on in running, in knowing about solar energy, rainwater harvesting, and cleaning water. Good uh, how to test the water. And when you actually do it, you learn your science and technology much better. Some impact of our work, 2,500 megawatt biomass-based power plants were based upon our work. National sheep tuning program based on our sheep, the animal husbandry division. Use of sweet sorghum for ethanol and syrup production in India and also in the world. And e-rickshaws concept. Then the use of ethanol as a household cooking and lighting fuel. We have a very stringent excise laws in this country. So when I got the very big award in Stockholm. We were two of us. The other was Tesla Motors, and we were the only NGO to get that award. So it was given by the uh, future um, queen of uh, uh, Sweden. And uh, after that award, the government of India said, what can we do? But I said, we'll do it into 100 huts. The excise people came. They said, even if the God gives you permission, you'll have to take excise permission from us. And it is not allowed to utilize alcohol for cooking and lighting, but it is a very big program in Latin America and in uh, Africa. Then rural restaurants concept gave rise to Amma's Kitchen and Shiv Bhojan. And the most important thing is all our work in the last 40 years have been done in less than 10 crores. And that is the frugal innovations. And I think you don't require too much money. What you require is a deep thinking and a desire and a great curiosity on how to solve that. We got many national and international awards and two Padmashiris in the small NGO. Now, you anything you do in your life, you can do with science. So for cooking, I am also, I take great pride and I'm a great cook. I do a lot of cooking. And there's a great science of cooking. How many of you cook? Men, 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 I'm asking one. Ah, wonderful. So four or five. Think about, you know, why do we need to know the science? Because it allows us to manipulate. I make 15, 20 different types of omelette. Not that it is not, not in recipe. Some people have said that I should. So I always used to say that if I fail in my technology work, I'll open up a restaurant because I think it'll it'll do well. Whatever you do, do it with passion. Do think about it. And it's a great thing to do. And science, you know, today is a multi-billion dollar science because the uh, flavors and nutrition, everything is looked at from a very scientific point of view. And if you want to do, go into this, this is also a very great thing. Then I'm sure everybody plays. There's a great science in sports. And in fact, the reason why so much science and technology is there because they make better and better sports equipment. And I show this uh, evolution of a badminton racket. And I have played with three rackets on the left side when I was young. And they used to always break after some time. You know, if you hit a very um, shot with a very tremendous power, it break, broke. But today, is a very nice new type of uh, metal, very lightweight, different uh, materials carbon fiber, so many things. So everywhere you do, there is a science required, science needed, and science is used, and it gives a very uh, big industry for the equipment, etc. How many of you would like to go in non-science area? You are all science scientists. None? Yeah, there's a lady with the back. You see, if you do deep thought, it will give you also, you know, all the great people were also Renaissance people. Da Vinci. Do you know that Newton spent 50% of his life in metaphysics? All his work 
of the great uh, gravitation and great things came just by the time he was 40 and rest of his life he spent in metaphysics he has written a huge amount of material on the whole basis of this nature world um, genesis everything because as a great scientist he also started looking at it what is the purpose of life what is the how exactly and he used to hide that but now the books are available and if you go on the internet you can get those books on the um, uh, as a pdf file on what he did da vinci again was, was a renaissance man everything he touched he did from a very scientific point of view in fact his his drawings of the human anatomy are remarkable please look at the books of da vinci you know these are you all know about faraday you read how many of you really read the books of faraday why not no curiosity or just because uh, somebody teaches in the class his books are priceless you read those books they are all available from the um, uh, united states uh, uk libraries or um, on the internet pdf remarkable he looked at everything in in life in fact i consider him one of the greatest experimentalist ex experimental scientists of all times bigger than uh, edison bigger than anybody else everything in fact large number of you know i'll, I'll give a full one hour lecture only on faraday's inventions please read that because you will get you know and another thing is is that some of these great people ask some very fundamental questions and in those times those questions could not be answered because the technology and the science was not developed enough but those questions are as valid today as they were at the time so when you read that you will be amazed at what they ask and try to solve them and that is how the science and technology will go forward and that is curiosity einstein was a great violinist uh, planck was a pianist in fact einstein and planck used to give concerts together and uh, have you heard about brian may you're not modern people eh great guitarist of the queens and he got a phd in the astrophysics what i'm simply saying is that science helps in creativity and the beauty of art and science mingle easily and effortlessly how many of you have seen uh saraswati the photo of saraswati what does saraswati have in her hand why because science art knowledge they all go together when you become creative creativity extends into everything and music is a great form of creativity so do that and you will be very you uh, will feel very happy about these things besides my technical work i also have interest in spirituality as i said you know this gave me sanity so when the things were tough i would write on these things i have written more than 200 articles and two books and i would like you to because i, I have made it, uh, them available on the net read them and i think that will be you know what is the purpose of life why you are here what should we do what can uh, all of us do things to make us happy because happiness is something that we should all be looking at and i write a column in daily sakar sakar is the largest newspaper in maharashtra and they have given me a column Uh, every sunday and i write on the issues for young children teaching and what they can do so this is very nice and finally science should be hobby and fun have you heard about langmuir 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 was the first industrial chemist to get the nobel prize i became very interested with him uh, with his uh, uh, biography with his philosophy and had a great satisfaction of interacting with his um, uh, right hand man called shefer shefer is a cloud seeding was done by shefer basically shefer was a high school graduate and he did a lot of discoveries with langmuir 
and nobody accepted you know because american uh, science and technology establishment is also very you know very uh, taliban type but uh, then the langmore made sure that shafer got on ready um, doctorate and then everybody agreed so shafer and i corresponded a lot and uh, the greatest thing was all the time you know it, uh, today this uh, now the, we have is uh, uh, leds etc but we talk about light bulb who invented light bulb huh that's wrong anyway who really made a light bulb huh no it was langmore langmore got his phd in europe and uh, he somehow got into general electric the whole basis of r and d in industry was started by langmore so langmore came to general electric general electric told him uh, told him that you are a phd in uh, chemistry try to see how can we make this bulb last longer because what edison had um, developed was it was to last 80 90 100 200 hours and he always kept on saying that i could not have it last longer because i could not pull the vacuum and langmore also started that because general electric had a lot of very good um, uh, labs and um, uh, workshop and he failed and then he realized that there was something else which was happening and when he put and i have written a uh, autobiography of langmore which was published in resonance in fact langmore's grandson wrote to me that this is the best biography that he has ever read so i felt very happy and in which he found out that if you put a uh, a uh, gas inert gas in the bulb will last forever and so the real electric incandescent bulb the originator is irving langmore the reason why i'm telling you is that general electric used to always say please keep on having fun with your science it is our job to see how that fun is translated into dollars and that was a great combination of science and technology and manufacturing and i think that is what we should, our companies and our con, our captains of industry should do that and you as youngsters when you go into any industry think about that because you can change the system from below so that is why i'm say, saying that science should be hobby and fun follow your interest deeply will create genuine and lead to scientific temper Janoon helps in creating focus and concentration and brings in happiness and that is the whole basis of life how to be happy and that is also the focus of the patanjali yoga and other yoga science is held by outdoor activities you should do more outdoor activities how many of you really do hands on science approach or you just simply do work and some computer do your teachers allow you to uh, go out and just you know you live in the most i'm sorry to say that i live in a rural area you are the most polluted city in the world most polluted you cannot change the environment because environment is something that you have no control though you have controls a little bit what can you do in your own house can you make a better filter today the air filters are available on the market but they are very costly and there is nothing very much i have worked with air filters and this is nothing very much they are just making money too much money think about it. make simple nice filters test it science happens when you have curiosity when as i told you you look at the uh, observation you convert that into um, physics you make into mathematical model and then you solve that do that it will teach you everything about science and technology if you work with your hands on any problem that you face it will teach you everything you don't have to follow the what is in the curriculum etc gandhi ji taught about nayi taleem long ago i think this is the new taleem do that will help in creating great scientists and good citizens and that is what we should be aim aiming at how you become a great and happy citizens of this great country thank you very much i really appreciate
Thank you once again. Yeah, sure. Please take this opportunity, wonderful opportunity. So I welcome some questions from your end. Yes, sir. So Anil, uh, it was a fantastic, uh, you know, talk and and conveying so many different good things to us younger people. I'm also younger than you, by the way. <laughs> right, right. Everybody is younger here. I keep saying that. No old people here. Only young, younger. You young, they younger. Right. So now, um, so what? How? What would you suggest? You know, if somebody is working in US but doesn't have a lovely wife who would lead him back to India, um, then how would you suggest he would come back? <laughs> I asked only tough question. Yeah. <laughs> I had, uh, you know, I, I get a lot of uh, students and people who are working in the uh, United States, they come the same type of advice. Well, I always tell them, uh, I said the best thing you used to um, uh, you know, some some of them even have children, so which has become very difficult. I must uh, share with you a um, sad secret that I have my daughter in America, America, whom I cannot get here. I have two daughters. The younger one says she had four fellowships from America. She said, no, I'm not going to America. So she runs our school. We have started our school. So it is very difficult to make such choices. The only thing is, is how much you are uh, passionate about your work, how much you are good about things. Another thing is, I feel that if you are good and want to do something really good, you can also do from the United States. I've had a lot of uh, people who wanted to help us. I said, I'm not interested in the money. I'm interested in you. I'm interested in the technology. But then what happens is that day-to-day -day work is so much overwhelming that they are not able to spend. But if you really are passionate about, then you can keep some time and use that time to help the country. And I think there are enough NGOs and enough organizations in, in India who would like to do that. At one time, you know, when I was a little more idealist, now I've become very cynical. <laughs> So I used to always think we should have a very national program of getting all these uh, scientists from uh, abroad. Uh, everybody, you know, all through, we always uh, talk about it. But somehow it didn't work out. But I still feel that if somebody is passionate, then there should be some mechanisms. By, For example, I always ask my friends in America to solve this, to solve that. And uh, sometimes it happens. That's all. Okay. Yes. Yeah, somebody uh, so, sir, most of your work is based on the rural place of Fulton. So, I want to know what exactly, like, how did you uh, counter the problems that you must have faced in a rural area to implement your scientific knowledge? Uh, that is always a challenge. And uh, you see, what happens is that if you develop something good, this is the law of the goodness. It spreads. For example, when we, I did the work in electric rickshaw or other things, I had we don't have money to make it, but slowly or sooner or later it spread. And that is the best form. I that's why I make all my things available free on the internet. People will read, and uh, it'll, something will happen. You know, uh, if you look at the history of uh, the technology and how it has gone, there used to be in the old times some 10-year difference when you start doing R&D and when the mass. But there has to be a very good synergy between the R&D and, and which a lot of um, companies in Western, Western world do that. Unfortunately, in India, we don't do that. Our research and development is in universities and etc. government organizations. We need to have and that is why I always talk to the youngsters that you will one day hopefully become a CEO of a big company. If you have that understanding of how R&D, you see, everything that we have today is because of R&D. Why we don't understand that? Because we feel, all, all the time we are looking at the bottom line. 
if we need something we'll we'll uh, import it from abroad that is not a right thing if we have to become atmanirbhar it has to be invented here not more than invent more than invention is this whole mindset we have to change because lot of our problems are our unique for example when i started working in lantern i didn't tell you because i didn't have time i looked at some of the reentry rocket material so i wrote to isro isro was so thrilled <laughs> they said who would have thought about using the reentry in the lantern etc it didn't succeed but you know the, the thought was there and i think there should be hundreds and thousands of such experiments which could, should be done somebody there in the back yeah gentleman in the in the okay. tie and suit ha huh? so i am fejan khan from st stephen's college mm -hmm. so we saw in the covid times like migrant workers who migrant from the rural india to the to work in the cities so like the rural india is facing the biggest problem of unemployment but did the migration take place like that or the other way around so sir, like in the uh, from rural to urban area we saw but that always take place huh? yes, sir, huh? Huh? it is because like there are less uh, employment in the rural area so my question is to you like uh, how we how we can generate more employment in the rural areas that's the same thing i keep on asking myself i keep on talking to the captains of industry because ultimately the 50% 60% of our population still is in rural india they don't have the purchasing power but the question is this that if we don't have that much greed for profits in from rural area i'm sure that it will spread and secondly ma, do you know anything about rural india okay the biggest selling item in rural india is a uh, smartphones people will may or may not have money but they'll buy smartphones so if something is good something is, is useful because smartphones are no more the means of communication it is a means of entertainment also they provide lot of entertainment movies and movie music etc something which is good then sells and that provides employment the large number of um, uh, companies or the small um uh, workshop of small shops have come which repair these phones so many things happen and india is in on the move what we need is and in fact there are large number of people who are fed up with staying in delhi etc they have started moving into rural areas agriculture etc this is a positive thing but we need to have it on a much larger scale i request us to introduce yourself and then ask your question i think it was a remarkable talk by you very inspiring and i feel there is something in the soil of maharashtra <laughs> i started my career in the early 70s from maharashtra i used to go to a city called vardha can i know you the leprosy was very high can, can i know your i am dr mera i spent all my okay. life in aim in delhi oh, good. i'm from the health background and you know in india out of the 10 to 12 million cases of leprosy around the world 5 to 7 million were in india and vardha was an area sir where not a family where there was not a case of leprosy and that drew me into that field and then of course we went on and on i wanted to know from you your opinion why is the biotech industry not growing in india <laughs> i saw that in a small country like holland you know every day is a new company born over there and this is the message that we want to give to our youngsters there but what i saw there i took a team of five top most uh, uh, doctors of aims to five universities in holland every university very well equipped and all that they had a biotech hub hub actually hamare yahan par at least mere zamane mein to kaha jata tha private enterprise ke sath interact nahi karna आप एकेडेमिया में हो तो एकेडेमिया इंडस्ट्री पार्टनरशिप जो लैग्ड बिहाइंड रही है इंडिया में इज दैट दी देखिए ये ये आई ए कंट्री ऑफ 130 करोड़ वी डोंट हैव बायोटेक इंडस्ट्रीज नो आपका कहना बिल्कुल सही है और ये इसका यू नो एग इन चिकन स्टोरी है देखिए थोड़ा सा हमने स्टडी किया है जो कैप्टन्स ऑफ वेरी मेजर कंपनीज है उनसे हम मिलते रहते हैं 
वो कैप्टन कौन है जनरली मोस्टली एक्सेप्ट टाटा को छोड़कर बाकी तो सब फैमिली है तो जिस माहौल से आप आते हैं तो यू नेवर थिंक अबाउट साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी और एनी आर एन डी आपको तो पैसा चाहिए पैसे से आप कहते हैं हम कुछ भी खरीद लेंगे तो दैट इज वेयर द फ्यूचर इज बिकॉज आफ्टर ऑल सम ऑफ यू विल गेट इन टू द इंडस्ट्री सम ऑफ यू मे राइज जैसे टाटा ने अभी किया है नॉन टाटा बिकेम अ सी ओ एंड इफ यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस थिंकिंग देन दे विल बी प्रोसेस बाई विच आर एन डी विल बिकम इम्पोर्टेंट दूसरी बात क्या होती है कि किसी भी कंट्री चाहे अमेरिका हो कुछ भी हो ऑल दीज थिंग्स फ्लो फ्रॉम द टॉप एंड द टॉप इज गवर्नमेंट एंड इफ द गवर्नमेंट फील्स यस आर एन डी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट If government feels that yes, we should develop our own process, then things happen. Or वो चीज संभाव नहीं हो पाई. हम हमारे फादर जो थे जब second string को leadership में थे, तो जब आजादी मिली, तो large number of jathas from South East Asia is to come to India. क्योंकि India was a shining example of technology. India was a shining example of industry. ये लोगों को believe नहीं होगा कि we were very high in terms of technology etc. Better than China. और लोग यहाँ आते थे learn करने के लिए. Look where India is and where other countries are. Leadership जो है वो ही करती है. 1987 में मैंने एक बहुत बड़ा lecture दिया था Carlton College. Carlton College एक बड़ा famous college है Minnesota में. वहाँ पर सारे मिनीसोरा के जो सीनेटर्स हैं वहीं से आते हैं उस एरिया से तो जिन्होंने मुझे बुलाया था उन्होंने शाम को एक पार्टी रखी थी मेरे ऑनर में तो द फॉर्मर डीन ऑफ एमआईटी बॉस्टन से वो भी आए थे तो पता लगा कि दैट डीन सतीश धवन एंड द फादर ऑफ चाइनाज रॉकेट प्रोग्राम और क्लासमेट्स इन कैल्टेक कैल्टेक का नाम सुना ना तो उन्होंने मुझसे यही पूछा कि देखो एंड उन्होंने ये कहा कि अमंग ऑल थ्री ऑफ अस सतीश धवन वाज द स्मार्टेस्ट पर्सन इन आवर क्लास कोई भी प्रॉब्लम होती थी हम सतीश धवन के पास जाते थे हम दोनों ही नहीं बाकी और भी जाते थे और उसने कहा लुक एट द स्पेस प्रोग्राम ऑफ चाइना एंड लुक एट द स्पेस प्रोग्राम फ्रॉम इंडिया तो मैंने उनसे पूछा मैंने कि ये क्यों हुआ तो उन्होंने कहा कि इवन इन द हाइट ऑफ द माउस कल्चरल रेवोल्यूशन उसने कहा था डोंट टच टू थिंग्स एटॉमिक एनर्जी एंड स्पेस दे वर ऑफ और वेन यू गिव फ्रीडम टू योर टॉप पीपल दे डू वंडरफुल थिंग्स ये वही देश है जिसने कि दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा थॉट दुनिया को दिया है यही देश है जहाँ के हमारे सारे लोग जो हैं वो ग्रेट काम करते हैं सारे दुनिया में हम लोग क्यों नहीं कर सकते Why don't we create an environment in this country? ये तुम ही लोग यू आर द फ्यूचर ऑफ दिस कंट्री डोंट लिमिट योर थिंकिंग यू कैन डू वंडरफुल थिंग्स ये मत सोचो जैसे किसी ने मुझसे कहा ये होता है वो होता है डोंट थिंक अबाउट दैट थिंक अबाउट वॉट यू कैन डू ठीक है ना सो इफ यू डू दैट आई थिंक इट लैपन तो महाराष्ट्र वाज की नहीं है सारे देश की ऐसी है देश में ही जो है After all, इतना बड़ा यू नो ग्रेटेस्ट फिलोसफिकल थाट केम फ्रॉम दिस कंट्री क्यों आया मैंने हमेशा बहुत सोचा है इंडिया मस्ट है बीन अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल कंट्री एवरी थिंग इज अवेलेबल पीपल हैव नो वरीज मतलब मैं थोड़ा बहुत मैं कुछ काम कर पाया हूँ क्योंकि वहाँ पर कोई वरी नहीं दो हमें रोटी मिल जाती है हमारा छोटा सा इंस्टीट्यूट है हम अपना कोई दखल नहीं देता है चुपचाप काम करते हैं My name is Palak, and I'm from Desh Bandhu College, Delhi University. So, like you mentioned, that we are a generation of internet. So, like whenever we identify any problem, a very first go-to resource is internet. But like we often face information overload when we are on that platform. So, how can we navigate through that? You see, that's that's a very interesting and good question because, uh, or uh, Google ne to aisa kar diya hai ki. पहले दस वो आएंगे वो बस वही होंगे 
जब हम हमारे यहाँ कुछ ये इंटरनेट नहीं था आई शुड टीच इन अमेरिका आई शुड टेल माई स्टूडेंट्स टू प्लीज गो एंड फाइंड आउट अ रेफरेंस बट थ्री रेफरेंसेस ऑन द सेम टॉपिक एंड दे शुड नॉट बी रिलेटेड टू इच अदर इट्स द साइंस ऑफ ट्राइंग टू फाइंड द राइट इंफॉर्मेशन विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट कम्स विथ टाइम विथ ऑल्सो फोकस क्योंकि बहुत सी चीजें जो है बहुत गड़बड़ है इंटरनेट पर एंड इनफैक्ट इट शुड बी अ ग्रेट चैलेंज पीपल शुड टीच एंड अगर इफ यू लर्न टीच योर यंगस्टर्स बिकॉज फाइंडिंग द राइट इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन द इंटरनेट इज अ ग्रेट चैलेंज इट इज अवेलेबल सो इफ आई लुक एट समथिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई डू लॉट ऑफ नाउ ब्रेन रिसर्च एक्सेट्रा आई गो टू मे बी ट्वेंटी एथ और थर्टी एथ and then probably that shows something not the first few bahut junk hai but that is a challenge and it should be looked at uh we can take last one question and yeah. then we will you can interact with sir after the session also oh i'm delighted yeah. and uh, you already have the email ha uh, yeah. uh, email uh, good point uh. गुड आफ्टरनून सर आई एम आशु फ्रॉम देश बंदी कॉलेज सर आपका लेक्चर इतना इंटरेक्टिव हुआ कि कॉन्फिडेंस आया कि आपसे कुछ क्वेश्चन पूछूं सर okay. एक क्वेश्चन मेरा आपसे ये था कि साइंस uh, और स्पिरिचुअलिटी में uh, क्या रिलेशनशिप है कोई नहीं है को, को, कोई डिफरेंस नहीं है सेम है वी आर ऑल लुकिंग फॉर ट्रूथ सर मेरा सेकंड क्वेश्चन ये था आपसे कि साइंटिस्ट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग बनते हैं सर उनमें मेन हर्डल या फिर मेन चैलेंजेस क्या है is that ki uh, jo youngster ya students hai wo career oriented jobs ke piche matlab zyada focus karte hai is wajah se scientist manufacturing mein subtle difference aa rahi hai par dekho aaj ki jo society hai wo focus uska money hai har aadmi ladki ladka jo hai wo money ki taraf jata hai how do we this is the biggest challenge i keep on talking to youngsters there's nothing no, there's something more than money humne apni zindagi mein kara thoda bahut and i am not unique i think there are hundreds and thousands of maybe somebody has to go to them or tell them because when you start looking at things very deeply you get a tremendous happiness phir money money sab jo hai wo piche chala jata hai and if you do, tum ek shirt aur ek pant pehnte ho why do you need to have 100 shirts and 200 pants tum do teen roti khaoge मैक्सिमम तुम्हारे पास तुम चलाने के लिए मोटरसाइकिल होगी पीपल हैव ट्वेंटी थर्टी कार्स आई विल नॉट नेम बट आई सॉ समबडी हु केम इन इज ओन प्लेन दे वर ट्वेंटी कार्स लाइन ये टू चूज विच ही वांट्स टू गो व्हाट टाइप ऑफ तो आप सीन लेकिन ये सोचना चाहिए कि वो मेंटल बेसिस क्या है द इनसिक्योरिटी इन सिक्योरिटी अगर निकाल दोगे अपने दिमाग से तो बहुत चीजें सही हो जाएंगी ठीक है सो इस बेसिस पर थैंक यू वेरी मच आई वाज रियली डिलाइटेड एंड आई होप दैट दिस क्वेश्चनिंग कंटिन्यूज नॉट विथ मी बट विथ योर सेल्फ ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर मैं नाउ रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर अशतो शर्मा प्रेसिडेंट इन सर टू फेलिसिटेट द स्पीकर ऑफ द सेशन थैंक यू सो मच सर इट्स रियली ऑन ऑनर फॉर ऑल ऑफ एस टू हैव यू हेयर may i also request other dignitaries uh, vice presidents of insa executive director also to join the dignitaries on the dais please so please a big round of applause thank you so much sir and once again thank you nandini ma'am for bringing sir back to india